Hey, peace, y'all. This is your brother, 93, and today we're going to be dealing with the black Portuguese, right? So we're going to start here with this source from Babylon to Timbuktu by Rudolf Windsor, page 124, right? Because I believe that his book, just in my opinion, is the source for a lot of people using the term black Portuguese to mean uh, basically a pure, unmixed kind of population of Sephardic Jews or their descendants or something like that in Portugal or in South Africa. So we're gonna look into we're gonna look into his source and we're gonna just flow. We're gonna look into the Black Portuguese today, right? So this is page 124 of his text, right? And we're gonna go right here. The Black Jews. And I'm quoting uh, his book, the black Jews came to Africa, not only by land, but also by sea. As you recall, in the year 1484, King John of Portugal deported great numbers of black Jews to the African island of Sao Tome, San Tome. The island of San Tome near Nigeria in Cameroon was discovered by the Portuguese in 1471, and it was established as a penal colony. To this island, Jews were sent who would not accept baptism. It is obvious that the Jews were deported to San Tome not only to mete out punishment to them, but King John's ulterior motive was to establish a commercial base with sophisticated black Jews in his growing empire in Africa. As time elapsed, the black Jews in Portugal and the black Jews in the Portuguese colonial possessions became known as black Portuguese, quote unquote black Portuguese. They were called black Portuguese because they were born in Portugal and they knew the history, culture, and language of Portugal. So here's the argument, basically. So I see a lot of people use this. So we're going to look into this and we're going to look into this narrative of Sao Tome, right? And we're going to see how this unravels. Is this true? Is there any truth to this? Or are they black Portuguese derived from a different means or a different source, right? So First, I want to go to another source I see people use. It's called The Critical Review or Annals of Literature, Volume 57, right, from 1783. And I'm going to start right down right here where it says King John, right? King John, in 1492, expelled all the Jews to the island of St. Thomas. That's the same as saying St. Tome, right, or Sao Tome, right? It had been discovered in 1471 and to other Portuguese settlements on the continent of Africa. And from these banished Jews, the black Portuguese, as they are called, and the Jews in Loango, who are despised even by the very Negroes, are descended. The source just clearly says that the black Portuguese are descendants of those people, right? So, the black Portuguese are said to be the descendants of the Sephardic Jews banished to Africa. Let's see what historical sources say about them. I believe I've shown this before, you'll see this in some of my other videos, but this book is a description of the coast of North and South Guinea, right, by Jean Barbeau, page 404, and right after it, I'm going to read page 408, right, so it talks about St. Thomas, right, on the left side, right, the island of St. Thomas, or St. Tome, but I want to just get right to it, on the right side, um, you'll see like some red markings that I made a long time ago. Um, if you go to the right, you'll see where it says, A few years after, such of those Jews as had escaped the malignant air were forced away to the island of Sao Tome, right? These are the banished Jews. They're married to black women fetched from Angola. Because there are some sources that simply just says Anglo women, leading somebody to, uh, you know, accidentally think these were white women. But these black women were fetched from Angola, right? So, in great numbers, with near 3,000 men of the same country, from those Jews married to black women in the process of time proceeded mostly that brood of mulattoes at this day inhabiting the island, most of them boasting, uh, boast of being descended from Portuguese, and their constitution is by nature much fitter to bear the malignity of the air, right? And he gets some of that from Faria uh, Isuza in his history of Portugal. He cites that, right? So obviously, there's two things to take away. If anybody ever came across sources about Sao Tome and the Jews, and you've seen Anglo, it is Angola because they're um, mistakenly quoting uh, Barbeau. And Barbeau and other sources will clear it up for you that the women were brought from Angola. 
two, which is really the major thing, the Jews who were forced to sail Tomei were given black women. Their descendants were mixed. Therefore, I am putting it on the table that the black Portuguese, the descendants, right, as it says right here, from the banished Jews, the black Portuguese, right, and the, and the ones from Luango are uh, descended, right? So we see from this source that the ones from Sao Tome had black and golden women and they created mulattoes, right? Here's, a, here's the second page, 408 of uh, Barbo's book. It says, the islanders are a mongrel people. As I have already hinted, white Portuguese descended from the first inhabitants of the island, right, where it was settled. Portuguese mulattoes also descended from the prescribed Jews sent there at the beginning of the colony and married the black women sent from Angola. Now, if the women were black and they created mulattoes, then that means that the Iberian Jews are non-black. However you want to call them, however you want to designate them, they're not actual black people, right? They create mulattoes, right? <clears throat> um, another thing I want to uh, make this known because when uh, there was there were certain people that are aware of Barbo's the nature of Barbo's writings. Jean Barbo is a writer of his time. What they do is a lot of these explorers didn't go to all of these places, so him as a primary source is in question. There's articles talking about how much to value him as a primary source, which is true. He borrowed a lot of his stuff along with, uh, I believe, John Oglaby from a man named Olford Dapper, who himself never been to Africa, but he had access to primary sources. The primary sources would be uh, certain church fathers, missionaries, Jesuits, basically. So this is all recycled information from um, Dapper, who got it from Jesuits. Doesn't mean the information is necessarily inaccurate. It just means that Barbo was not there himself to give this information. So therefore, he's not a primary, primary source. But this stuff is uh, backed up by other sources in history. Here's another source that talks about the Jews of Sao Tome, and I've shown this before. The modern part of a universe from the earliest accounts of time, 1760. Right? Y'all can Google this and find this. Page 4, 414. And I show this source to show the contrast between the swarthy Jews and black Africans, right? It says, The consequence was that they supported the climate of St. Thomas, the Sao Tome, without any great diminution of their number, right? Right? It said, We are informed likewise that John of Portugal, that's King John, the Portuguese king, right? He sold for slaves all those Jews who refused to embrace Christianity, and that after ordering their children to be baptized, they were transported thither, or transported there, from whom, from them, are descended the present race of inhabitants, who are a kind of mixed descent between the swarthiness and attribilious, attribilious sorry, temperament of the Jews and the more sanguine, plethoric habit and jet black complexion of the Negroes. So this is another source other than, um, other than Barbo speaking about the actual mixture and that these Jews, these are the same Sephardic Jews that in some sources are called swarthy or tan or olive or a little darker than the average European, contrasted with actual Negroes, Africans, the jet black complexion Negroes right here. So that's just a juxtapose between the two and also to show that they were mixing, right? So these non-black uh, Jews or whatever, these Iberian Jews with the swarthy kind of complexion were... Um, mixing with actual black Africans. Right here is a source, um, this is a simple overview of uh, the Lansados. It's, it's pronounced Lansados. You see that C, but it has like a, a little thing there under the C. So the Lansados were the thrown out ones. They were settlers and adventurers of Portuguese origin in Senegambia, Cabo Verde, Guinea, Sierra Leone, and other areas on the coast of West Africa. Many were Jews, often new Christians escaping escaping persecutions from the Portuguese Inquisition. Lansados often took African wives from local ruling families, securing protection and, and advantageous trading ties. They established clandestine trading networks and weaponry spices and oftentimes enslaved people, right? Although never large in number, mixed race children born to the Lansados and their African wives and concubines served as crucial intermediaries between Europeans and Native Africans. These mixed race people wielded significant power in the early development of port economies in Basal, Cacho, and uh, 
and surrounding areas, right? So this is just a Wikipedia entry on Lansados to get y'all um, familiar if you're not already. Basically, many of the Portuguese Jews and New Christians, but not exclusively them, many of them were the Lansados act, um, active in West Africa, right? So let's keep moving. And I showed this source to show it wasn't just Seo Tome, like um, just like uh, Windsor and the other source said, it was the Portuguese possessions. They had more than just Seo Tome. They had Cape Verde. They had parts of uh, of Guinea. They had parts of Angola. So the Portuguese were kind of doing the same thing in multiple places. Also, the Portuguese Jews in particular were in Suriname, Jamaica, and other places in South America as well. Right. So this book is The Black Jews of Africa by Edith Bruder, page 116. It talks about the Lansados, descendants of the banished Jews, and they made uh, descendants with black African women. So I'm going to read where it says, uh, Several incidences confirm, too, the presence of Jewish Lansados or of their descendants on the coast of Western Africa. A 17th century text by Francisco de Lemos Coelho on the description of the coast of Guinea indicates that many Jews born in Portugal lived there, owning many, owning very large houses and went there to practice their religion because the king of the country protect them, protected them and in fact because they could not be punished, right? Coelho also reports that in Rufis Senegal, many Jews, some of whom came from the north, owned trading houses and that they were rather disdained by both Africans and residents. They also paid more taxes. They also paid more taxes than the other whites. Now, that quote right there is interesting. They paid more taxes than the other whites. So that means that that kind of indicates that even if you don't think these Iberian Jews are white in a modern usage, they are pretty much compared to other whites or the other Europeans in Africa, right? But they were resigned to do so in order to live according to their laws. They left descendants in this country, resulting from the relations with negresses. Negresses is like a female black woman, a female Negro, right? They left descendants in this country, resulting from relations with negresses who were Jewish like themselves, but thanks to divine mercy, they converted to the Catholic Church in my time. So, yeah, so it's obvious that they took black women and had children and kept on in their Jewish practices in Africa, but then it also says that they converted to the Catholic Church, right? So get this book, The Black Jews of Africa by Edith Bruder, that's on page 116. So it appears that the black Portuguese are the mixed descendants of Jews and black African women. Is it possible to see a pattern of Portuguese Jews and non-Portuguese Jews creating black Portuguese elsewhere? That's the question that I ask. And we're going to go along on a ride and uh, go through some of these sources that might indicate that that is the case. The Black Portuguese Nomenclature. Now, to be clear, all of the cases that I'm going to show is not going to explicitly say Jews, but I want to focus on the Portuguese, right? Because the Portuguese designate these people as such, right? And they seem to be doing this a lot of places that they go. Evidence seems to suggest that in various places Portuguese go, they, they seem to intermix with darker indigenous inhabitants whose offsprings are at some part or some point called black Portuguese. It may also apply to natives who become culturally Portuguese as well. So the first stop is going to be Cape Verde because Cape Verde is very similar to Seo Tome, where they were talking about the Jews. The same history is there and actually we get a little bit more there, right? So this is a source, the old world and the new significance of past and present immigration to the uh, American people by Edward uh, Owlsworth Ross, 1970, page 179, right? So it says right here as underlined, and this was, I, I, I took this from a, a good um, a Hebrew brother who posted this, but this was making a point of mine, right? It says, besides the white Portuguese have come in multitudes of black Portuguese from the Cape Verde Islands. So now... Just like they were talking about the black Portuguese in Seo Tome, we see the black Portuguese in the Cape Verde Islands. And that island has the same similar history of Jewish um, banishment and of African presence there. So it's going to be interesting to see if this backs us up, right? It says they are obviously Negroid, the Cape Verdeans. So if you've never seen people from Cape Verdean 
from Cape Verde before. This is how they look. All right. And I'm pretty sure they get darker than this. I don't want to make this like this is the only representation of Cape Verdeans. But oftentimes they are uh, brighter skin, beautiful, fair, um, brown. Some of them definitely are dark, are typical Bantu looking, phenotypically African. But you, this is very prevalent, These this kind of look in Cape Verdeans. Why? Because they do have a history with the Portuguese. They are mixed, right? So this is Edith Bruder's book again, The Black Jews of Africa, page 114, right? So I'm trying to see what I want to read from. There's a lot here. I guess I'll just start at the top. A Jewish presence on the West West African coast and islands. It says the Cape Verde Islands, which had been discovered between 1455 and 1462, were from 1472 essentially a slave trading place, right? Right? And uh, I'm going to go down a little bit. It says, uh, despite the important role of Portuguese Jews in commerce, navigation, and cartography of Africa, as early as 1480, they faced profound oppression during the Spanish and Portuguese Inquisitions when they became termed Moranos or Judeos Segredo, secret Jews. It was... Um, However, in 1492, the Spanish Inquisition developed its fullest expression of anti-Semitism, quickly spread to Portugal, and then it talks about Manuel I of Portugal, how he exiled thousands of Jews to Sao Tome, Principe, and Cape Verde. So those exiled Jews are there, right? And now we see the Black Portuguese is a name for Cape Verdeans, right? So these are, these could represent what you would call Black Portuguese, right? It's indicated by this source right here. It talks about Black Portuguese from Cape Verde. This is how some of them look. And this source confirmed that <clears throat> that the Jews were taking to say, um, not only Sao Tome, but Cape Verde, right? Um, those who were not expelled were converted by force or executed. And it talks about the persecution, right? The, despite their exile or degradado, degradado, yeah, convict status, the small number of European and Jews residing in Cape Verde were allowed to engage in trade as long as they did not compete with the royal trading monopolies. So these people were able to, were able to trade, right? It says, um, yeah, encourage the traders, converts, or expelled Jews from Portugal to settle along Senegambia, Senegambia and Upper Guinea uh, to trade for ivory, hide, slaves, gold, gum, wax, and amber while based in Cape Verde, right? Those traders, usually called lanzados, were often but not always of Jewish origin. So many of them were um, Jews, not all of them. The term lanzado derives from the Portuguese verb to throw out, right? And I want to go down a little further, right? In 1614, the governor of Cape Verde recorded that the greatest number of lanzados were Jews. So many of the Jews were there in Cape Verde. Jews from Cape Verde and Portugal were already known in Jao as early as 1591, and a synagogue was noted there in 1641 by George D. Castillo. So, <clears throat> in 1606 in Portugal, and according to Father Baltazar Barrera on the Senegalese coast, there were 100 Portuguese following the laws of Moses. So, those are Portuguese Jews. In 1622, the Cape Verdean governor... Don Francisco de Mora reported to the Portuguese king that the Guinea, Guinea coast rivers were full of Jews who were masters of the local regions, right? So we see that Cape Verde has the same history as Sao Tome, right? And this is just a little article from the Washington Post, right? And I put on the side that not all the Cape Verdeans are mixed, but they can uh, possibly be in a sense considered uh, culturally Portuguese. So this is just a Washington Post article from Kathy Sawyer in 1980. Cape Verdeans face identity problem in the U.S. They came to this country from a miniature melting pot of their own, the descendants of white Portuguese and black Africans. Theirs is uh, an ethnic tapestry shot through with threads from the Chinese, the Jews, the Moors, and Indians. So this is just showing that the, uh, the Cape Verdeans were mixed. That's just an article just talking about that. Next source is Immigrants in Industries, right? By United States Immigration Commission, William Paul Dillingham, 1911, page 444 and 539. 444, we hear right here, it talks about in Rhode Island, the Portuguese are found uh, in the Providence in Bristol and Newport counties, right? Uh, the census of 1905 enumerates them by place of birth and yada yada. 
uh, and uh, those born in the Cape Verde Islands are black Portuguese. That's what I want uh, you guys to take away from this. So this just reiterates that um, the, the people from uh, Cape Verde are called black Portuguese. This is what many of them look like, right? So you can take from that what you will, obviously. Iberian Jews, black people mixing. Makes a lot of sense, right? Here's another one, right? Well, this is actually the uh, page 539 in that text. Um, talks about the black Portuguese from the islands of Cape Verde, right? So I just want to show the DNA uh, of those people there when they when they did a, uh, a paper on them, when they did a study on them. Why chromosome lineage? Because we're looking for the male lineage. Because, you know, a lot of these people trace their lineage. When they make these claims, they're talking about male lineage claims, right? So we look at the Y chromosome lineage in Cabo, Cabo Verde Islands, witness the diverse geographical origins of its first male settlers by a lot of people, Rita, Goncalve, um, and many others listed here below, right? So let's just read it. And let's get through it. It says the Y chromosome haplogroup composition composition of the population of uh, Cabo Verde Archipelago was profiled using 32 uh, SNPs. Right, that's a short word for that. Right, so let's go. Unexpectedly, more than half of the paternal lineages, 53.5% of Cabo Verdeans, clustered in haplogroups I, J, K, and R1. So those are pretty much non African haplogroups, right? So that shows that the men who came there were not of sub Saharan African uh, ancestry. Um, paternally, right? So it says it's characteristic of populations of Europe and the Middle East while being absent in the probable West African source population of Guinea-Bissau. Moreover, a high frequency of J lineages in Cabo Verdeans relates them more closely to populations of the Middle East and probably provides the first genetic evidence of the legacy of the Jews. They're talking about this J lineage right here through the males, right? And we see the history is the same as Sayo Tome. The men come there and they get hold of black women, right? And they create mixed descendants and we know that the people even up until the last hundred years ago were talked about in sources matter of fact some 50 years ago in the 70s as black portuguese so the black portuguese descendants this this um study reveals that they have j and they're linking that to jews and then um you keep reading it says in addition the considerable proportion 20.5 percent of e3b uh, M -E -M 81 that's e1b1b y'all yeah, that lineage indicates a possible gene flow from the Middle East or Northeast Africa, which at least partly could be ascribed to the Sephardic Jews. The Sephardic Jews do have E1B1B. They have J and they have other um, uh, lineages. Now, the E is definitely found in Northeast Africans, non-white populations, some black populations, and definitely some Semitic populations. So that is definitely tied to Jews and that could be uh, equated to the Sephardic Jews. Says nothing about um, how those men looked, but we know their descendants are definitely mixed looking. So it's it's likely that these were Iberian uh, E carriers, E1B1B carriers, right? Um, let's see. In contrast to the predominance of West African mitochondrial DNA haplo haplotypes, so it says the predominance of it means the women seems to mean that the women were uh, mostly African. In their maternal gene pool. The major West African Y chromosome lineage E3A, that's E1B1A or EM2, that most African Americans and Africans have, right? They said it was observed only at a frequency of 15.9%. And that makes sense because they imported African men into Cape Verde and Sao Tome. I, I believe both of those islands were barren when the Portuguese got there. They brought slaves from elsewhere. So it says, overall, these results indicate that gene flow from multiple sources and various sex-specific patterns have been important in the formation of the genomic diversity in the Cabo Verde Islands. So basically, these people seem to, the majority of them, it looks like based on this study, have non-African um, lineages. And then you have J and um, E1B1B that's tied to, to, to the Safari Jews. So it looks like Iberian men and black women created the Cape Verde, Cape Verdeans, or at least a significant portion of them. And that's your black Portuguese in Africa. So I'm going to keep moving on. So we're here in India. 
Oh man, this is interesting, right? India of all places, Portuguese come here. This source right here is Universal Geography. Um, it's by Conrad Malt Broom, 1827, page 231. And I just want to read this little part right here, right? Um, it talks about the black Portuguese, the black Portuguese in India. It says the black Portuguese, a mixed breed of Europeans and Hindus who are widely spread over the coast of the Deccan and the province of Bengal, right? Mm. So we have black Portuguese in India. Now these people likely aren't Jews. They're probably descendants of regular Portuguese and Indians. But now we see that just seeing black Portuguese definitely isn't even indica indicative of uh, Africans, right? We see that the Portuguese go elsewhere. They go outside of Africa. They go to other dark populations and their descendants are called black Portuguese. My next source is A Narrative of a Voyage to Arabia, India, etc. by Silas James, 1797, page 112. Right? It says, The natives of the island of Bombay and the coast of Malabar consist of the following descriptions. Portuguese, Topasas, Hulankors, I think that says Muslimin, Brahmins, um, etc. Right? Jews, all that. The black Portuguese, as they are denominated, though they never were more originally than a mongrel breed of Portuguese and Gentoos, are a sprightly, active, healthy, healthy, muscular race of people, but very artful, right? So now we even have in, I believe this is in the uh, island of Bombay and coast of Malabar, they have the black Portuguese, right? And they're um, said to be a mongrel breed of Portuguese and Gentoos, right? So we're going to go to, I believe this is pronounced Selyan, uh, modern day Sri Lanka, right? And I just want to show some of the people here, some of the people that the Portuguese would have been mixing with. So their descendants would be called black Portuguese. Obviously, the, these are Indian people, people of the Indian um, subcontinent or right off the coast. Sri Lanka is like, a, a, I believe, a big island off the coast of India, but it does host a... Um, a vast array of people with multiple shades of tone, but they are a people of color, right? They, they range from a little lighter to darker. It's darker than some people in America today, African Americans, right? So this source right here is an account of the island of Ceylon by Robert Percival, 1803, page 143, and I'm 144. The top is 143, the bottom is 144. So I'm going to read. A race known by the name of Portuguese forms another part of the inhabitants of Ceylon. From their name, it might be supposed that they were descendants of that European nation, whose appellation they bear. But this is, in fact, by no means the case. And I, I apologize if this stuff isn't legible to y'all. I can read it. When I put it here, I, I just wanted it to be here so y'all can source it. Y'all can find it yourself on y'all phones or on a smaller screen and y'all can read it, right? So I'm going to continue reading. Um... So they're saying that uh, that uh, from the name, it might be supposed that they were descendants of that European nation, uh, but this is not the case. The name is indeed derived from the spurious descendants of that people by native women who were scattered, scattered in great numbers over this island and all their uh, other settlements in India. But both the manners and color of these original Indian Portuguese are now equally lost among that race, which now bears their name. So they look like they are they, they look like the uh, Indians, right? The present Portuguese of Ceylon are a mixture of the spurious descendants of the several European possessors of that island by native women, joined to a number of Moors and Malabars, a color more approaching to black than white, with a particular mode of dress. Half Indian and half European is all that is necessary to procure the appellation of a Portuguese. So basically, there were there were also people there that were just becoming culturally Portuguese and calling themselves that. You know, they were saying that all they got to do is pretty much uh uh dress like a Portuguese person, 
and you can get basically take take the name Portuguese, right? These people are found all in the European settlements in India, particularly those belonging to the Dutch, who often form intermarriages with them. It is in particular very common in Ceylon to see a respectable and wealthy Dutch man married to a Portuguese woman of this description. A connection with our countrymen look upon with the greatest abhorrence and would not enter into on any account. The Dutchmen allege that the cause of this, these intermarriages being so prevalent is that scarcely any woman leaves Holland to come to India except those who are already married. The manners of the Portuguese differ from those of the Moors, Malabars, and other Mohammedans. They affect rather to adopt those of the Europeans and wear hats instead of the turbans and brooches in place of the pieces of cloth, which other Indians uh, wear wrapped around the waist and drawn together between their legs like loose trousers. At present, it is customary for any black fellow who can procure a hat and shoes with a vest and breeches and who has acquired some little smattering of the Catholic religion to aspire to the title of Portuguese. So that's important because it's saying that it really don't matter as long anybody there as long as they can dress like that uh, <laughs> they can get a hat shoes a vest the breeches uh, and you can speak a little um, well you can get a little bit of the Catholic religion you can aspire to be called Portuguese a distinction of which he is extremely proud so these people are becoming culturally Portuguese they're, they're dressing like them they're, they're, they're worshipping like them they're probably learning the language right so this is what I mean when you can be not even a descendant and basically uh, become a quote-unquote black Portuguese, right? So this is page uh, 145. Take that out right there. Right? So this is page 145. This is page 145. It says, although the black Portuguese universally profess the Christian religion and are commonly Catholics, yet they retain many pagan customs and their religion may be considered as a compound of both. They affect to derive their religion as well as their descent from the European Portuguese, though the name be almost the only thing they retain of either. Right? The Dutch have allowed priests and other missionaries to go among them. Many of them profess the Protestant religion and go to church. Um, in general, they are somewhat fairer, fairer than the Moors and Malabars, but those who are so, to any considerable degree, may be looked upon as the offspring of the Dutch in later times. For the blood of the European Portuguese has been so intermixed as to leave scarce a trace behind. Complexions of all sort are indeed found among this mongrel race, from a jetty black to a sickly yellow or tawny hue. Right? So we're going to keep moving. Let's see, oh, we got page 146 of the same source. It was from these black Portuguese that the troops known by the name of Topasses were taken. Right? So, there you have it as far as India. 